Hello and welcome to Minimalist Monday. Today we are going to talk about analogies. So I really enjoy trying to think of really good analogies or metaphors for different things in life. Uh, we, back in college when I took this um, one theater class with the beloved Dr. Anderson, that was one of the things we had to do for each play we read was come up with a metaphor for the play. And that was like my favorite part. And I feel like I was kind of good at it. I don't know. I just really enjoy using that part of my brain and trying to think creatively outside the box on what something, um, a different way to kind of think about something. Uh, that being said, when I was in the education program, one of our assignment was uh, one of our assignments was to think of an analogy for education for ourselves as teachers and how uh, we would teach, how we'd interact with our students. What's kind of your metaphor and analogy for that? And I never could really think of a good one. I always was trying to think of something to do with a ship. Like, I'm the captain of the ship with the students on the ship. But I didn't like that. I didn't like being the captain of the ship because the students didn't really have a choice in what, where they were going or what they were doing. So I thought maybe um, I was the ship itself or, I don't know, I just kept trying to think of all these different things. And that's prob And I could never find a good one and that's probably why it's obvious that I should leave the education program because the education system itself had just never worked for me. And I think that's why I could never really um, find an analogy I was happy with, if that makes any sense. But anyways, uh, that brings us to uh, kind of what we're talking about today, which is analogies or metaphors for minimalism. So I've mentioned, I think in a, a couple times in a couple different videos in the past, I've thought of minimalism as a ladder. And every time I kind of go deeper into minimalism, get rid of something else or am able to let go of something, I go up another rung on the ladder. My, my thought was everyone's kind of in a different place on the ladder of minimalism. Well, recently someone commented that they didn't think that was a very good analogy because it kind of implies that different people are higher up or better minimalists uh, than other people. And though that's not the intention of what that analogy, uh, what I was trying to go for with that analogy, that's kind of true. It does imply that, which means it's not a strong analogy or at least as strong of an analogy as it could be, if that makes any sense. Because it doesn't matter what rung on the ladder you are, you're not higher uh, above than anyone else. You know, you're not a better minimalist or something. We're all kind of in different places in the journey. And some of us are going to be happy, happier stopping at different places in the journey. Uh, and minimalism obviously looks different for everyone. So what is a better analogy or metaphor for minimalism? And I was thinking about this, and I think a really good one is minimalism is a cave. All right, minimalism to me is this cave. And so most people don't live inside the cave of minimalism. And everyone kind of has their own cave. That's the beauty of it. Uh, everyone has kind of their own uh, sort of cave for minimalism. And most of us don't live in it. Most people go about outside of the cave in the regular world, in this modern age where you get things and you keep things and you don't really know why you own things. Everything's just kind of there and it's piled up. And it's not just physical things either. Of course, it's also mental, emotional, spiritual. We all have all this baggage. We're holding on to things that no longer serve a purpose in our lives and are no longer bringing us fulfillment or happiness or anywhere closer to God or anything like that. So the first step um, to me of minimalism is just walking into that cave, uh, walking right into the cave. Um, and first thing that happens in that cave is uh, you find that there's nothing in there uh, that maybe you don't think you need or that you don't love or that you don't get some kind of use or purpose out of. All the little extra things, all the kind of garbage uh, is gone. All right, all the little doubles and knickknacks and things start to go away when you walk into that cave. And it's kind of scary at first. You feel kind of cut off from the outside world because everyone outside of the cave is holding on to everything they've ever owned. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. They're holding on to everything. Their identity lies in everything that they have, everything that they possess. And they're sort of possessed by their possessions, right? They're sort of owned by the things that they own. Um, so once you get into that cave, you start to let go of that. All right, so that first room maybe looks a lot similar to uh, your life outside of the cave, your house outside of the cave, but that first sort of cavern in the cave, um, you're just starting to let go of things, right? Maybe you don't have uh, quite as many things lying around in the living room. You probably maybe have the same amount of furniture, but you don't have maybe every single knickknack you had before or something like that. Every uh, sort of uh, little area in that first cavern uh, looks a little bit differently. 
And that, to me, is sort of the first step to minimalism. It's kind of um, where KonMari takes you if you do the KonMari method. It's sort of that first uh, level of minimalism where saying, hey, I can just own things that I love. I can just own things that I use. Something like that. And many of us start there in that uh, sort of cavern in the cave. And then some of us, at some point uh, while holding space in that cavern, we get a little bit more restless. We think, you know what, maybe there's more that I could let go of. Maybe I'm still holding on to more than I needed. This was a good first step, step, but I want to see more. So when you do start to feel restless in that way, you start going deeper into the cave. You start looking for another cavern. And so you start maybe going down this sort of tunnel and leaving behind that first cavern that you found when you walked into the cave. And as you go, again, it's kind of uh, nerve-wracking, a little bit scary, but a lot exciting too. Uh, So you go in, you're not sure what it's going to be like, and you find that next cavern. And the next cavern has less than the first cavern. There maybe is now no longer so much furniture in the living area. All right. Uh, Maybe the bedroom doesn't have as many things. Maybe there's only one nightstand now instead of two. Something like that. You're starting uh, to see that uh, things are starting to disappear. All right? And as those things disappear, you find more peace when holding space in that area, when spending time um, in those different areas of that next cavern. But again, as time goes on, you maybe start again to get a little bit restless. Think, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm st- there's still deeper I can go. And that's kind of, to me, how I envision the whole journey to minimalism is not so much anymore climbing up rungs on a ladder, but going deeper and deeper into this cave, finding newer and newer caverns with less and less things. And uh, as you go deeper, um, of course, there is a final cavern at the very end, which there's nothing in it. There's absolutely nothing in this cavern, uh, but just you yourself. And to me, at least for myself, that's Uh, sort of the cavern I'm going towards, the goal I'm aiming uh, my whole kind of being uh, to. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I will ever achieve it, uh, that I'll ever just own nothing. But that doesn't mean it's not possible, all right? Think of uh, people like um, Jesus, obviously, is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, He, you know, didn't have really any possessions, and he taught us not to. Think of um, the apostles, different saints, St. Francis. He literally gave up everything. All he had was the clothes on his back. All right, so it is possible. And I don't know that I'll ever get there someday. Obviously, having a wife and kids changes that up a bit. I'm not, uh, there's a little bit different responsibilities there. But the point is, the point of this whole analogy is that you can usually always go deeper. You can always find a cavern with less things. I never would have thought I would have been in the cavern that I am in now where all of my clothes fit into a backpack. All right, I did not picture that when I first stepped into this cave. The first time I got in the cave, the first cavern I was in, I was thrilled. I was excited. I felt so free and liberated and peaceful. But eventually I got restless and wanted to find a deeper cavern where I could have even less possessions. So I feel like this is a stronger analogy or metaphor for minimalism because just because I'm in uh, deeper than you are in minimalism doesn't mean I'm any better or anything like that. It just means uh, that's where I am on my journey, right? Some people might walk right into the cave and they might do KonMari or something like that and say, this feels so good, they, this feels freeing, I feel liberated, and they don't necessarily feel restless ever. After, after that point, maybe they're just happy, they're content uh, to just stay in that first cavern. And that's fine. There's like nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's almost a way bigger difference between um, the people outside the cave and the people within that first cavern than there is between people in that first cavern and anyone who's all the way in the deepest cavern where there's nothing. Right? Because even though in a way they have, there's maybe a bigger difference in possessions between that last cavern and the first cavern than there is between the first cavern and outside the cave. There's such a shift in mental focus. There's such a difference between kind of thinking outside the box, pulling yourselves outside of the culture or the society that you kind of grew up in, really questioning that. There's almost a way bigger shift, at least in mentality, between being uh, outside the cave and stepping into that first cavern. Then maybe there even is between that first cavern and the last one. 
right? Because as minimalists, we're all in the cave somewhere, right? We can hear each other's echoes bouncing off the cavern walls. And it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful space for us all to be in. And it's great to take a peek into other people's caverns. You know, whether it be through talking to other people, seeing their living spaces, just watching people on YouTube like this and checking out, wow, look at that cavern. Look at that cavern there. There's less stuff in them than there is in my cavern. And then maybe we start to feel our heart being pulled towards uh, finding our own cavern that's similar to that. Maybe finding a uh, space where we can uh, live that has even less belongings than we already have. So I don't know. That's just my sort of idea of a metaphor or analogy for minimalism that we're all in this, uh, our own personal cave, but we can keep going deeper and deeper into newer caverns as at our own pace, at the way that we feel called to. And that's going to look different for everyone. Everyone's going to go at different um, pace. I'm more of a person who's just like, let's do this, let's get this done, I want to find the next cavern, I want to let go of stuff. Everyone's not like that, and that's fine. So, I don't know, let me know what you guys think of this uh, idea, this analogy, this metaphor, and let me know in the comments below if you have any analogies or metaphors that you kind of think of minimalism as, that kind of helps you envision this whole movement. But thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure to be in this cave with you, even if we're all in different caverns. I will talk to you guys on Wednesday. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Love you, bye.